All right, today we're gonna to talk about status frames. How do you pre-frame a call where the prospect at the end of that sales call or sales appointment, depending on if you sell B2C or, or B2B, there's some tweaks there, knows that there could be possible next steps, which helps eliminate the I wanna think it over objections. Now, let me preference by saying something. A lot of salespeople have been taught to use frames that sound something like this. And there's variations of this, but they say, and then towards the end of the call, if you feel it's a good fit for us and we feel you're a good fit for our company, then we can show you the next step. Is that fair? Now, that's okay, but typically that's gonna trigger a lot of sales resistance in a lot of people, okay? Now, let me tell you why, because you're probably experienced if you use it. First of all, go down to the bottom of this video, hit the subscribe button, that's probably important for you. Hit the subscribe button, and to the right of that, or maybe the left, I don't know, somewhere in there, there's like a little bell. That's your notifications button. Hit the notifications button as well, so you get notified by YouTube every time I post a new training video, which I typically do two to four times a week. First of all, no one believes when you say, and uh, you know, we'll see if you're a good fit for our company. Do you really believe the average prospect thinks that like, hey, I really wanna do this, here's my credit card for $30,000 or whatever you sell, and you go, nope, nope, I can't take that after I spend an hour with you, you're not a good fit for our company. Prospects don't believe that, so why do you use it? It doesn't work on most of your prospects. In fact, even if they don't say anything to you about it, deep inside, just like when somebody does that to you, you're thinking like, yeah, okay, right, whatever. And so you stay surface level. Your questions, when you, when you uh, answer the questions that the, the salesperson is asking you, you give like vague answers, you stay surface level, you might give three or four word answers, and then at the end you're like, I, I need to check my finances, I need to keep looking around, and that frame doesn't work at all. The second thing it does is it triggers sales pressure in the prospect's brain. So the rest of that conversation they think when you say like, if you're a good fit for us and you feel like it's a good fit for you, you know, you can make a decision at the end, you know, you don't have to, you know, that type of thing causes most of your prospects to feel pressure. So what they do, the entire conversation then after that is they stay surface level with you. They don't really go below the surface. They don't really tell you really what's going on. They don't tell you the real problems, the, let's say the consequence of the problems, the root cause, how the problems are affecting them. You still wanna do a frame, but you gotta learn how to neutralize it better, okay? So let me help you do that. So this is called an NEPQ status frame. Now, if you're not familiar, if you're not one of our clients, NEPQ stands for Neuro-Emotional Persuasion Questioning. That comes from my behavioral science background uh, and psychology background in college and university. So this is a generic example that I'm gonna give you right now, okay? So this is a generic example I'm gonna give you, and then right after that generic example, I'm gonna give you about three, maybe two or three different industry-specific examples so you can see how it has to be tweaked depending on what you sell. Not by much, maybe five, 10%. All right, so now, this is in the first part of your conversation. We would call that the connective phase when you're asking connective questions. There's usually a couple of connective questions you're asking before this. You're not just gonna start a sales call on an outbound lead or an inbound lead with a frame. And you're not gonna use this if you cold call. If you cold call, this would not be used on the actual cold call. The next appointment when you have that discovery session with them, that's when you'd use more of the frame, okay? There's more trust and credibility there. All right, so the first, John, the first part of this call, it, it's pretty basic. It's really more for us to find out about what you're using with XYZ and the results that you're getting from that compared to where you want to be uh, just to see what the gap looks like to see if we can help. And then towards the end of the call, if you feel that it, you know, that it might be what you're looking for, we can talk about possible next steps. Does that help you or would that help you? Now, I'm gonna analyze and break this down. The first part of this call is pretty basic. Now, why would I downplay it? Why not say like, oh, the first part of the call, it's really exciting, I'm gonna find out about you? Because the average prospect doesn't like overly enthusiastic salespeople, just like you don't like overly enthusiastic salespeople. So when I downplay it, what that does is it causes the prospect to let their guard down. Okay, just because you're excited about the product and you believe in it, does the prospect, are they excited and believe about it a couple minutes into the conversation? No, because you have zero trust and credibility at that point. Trust and credibility is made by your question ability that builds a gap. That's a whole nother training. So I'm downplaying it, pretty basic, causes them to let their guard down. It's more for us, instead of you saying it's more for me, 
us as collaborative, you and the prospect, to find out about X, Y, Z and the results you're getting. Now look at my hands, the results you're getting from that compared to where you're wanting to be. Notice how I'm, always, I'm already putting a gap in their mind for us to see what that gap looks like to see if we can help. Really? You're all about help. Now, this part's important. Look how I neutralize this. Then towards the end of the call, if you feel that it might be what you're looking for, we can talk about possible next steps. Might be impossible are neutral terms, okay? Because if you did it this, and then towards the end of the call, you know, if you feel like it's a good fit and we feel you're a good fit for us, we're gonna show you the next steps. Well, I didn't say anything, I, I didn't say I was ready to buy today, I'm just looking. You're gonna trigger that with a lot of your prospects, especially if they're A-types. To not trigger that with anybody, you just simply change, might be what you're looking for, we can talk about possible next steps. Nobody's gonna stop the call and be like, no, I'm not interested in possible next steps. Like they can't say it because it's a neutral term. See how that worked? I want you to keep that in mind. Now that's the generic version. Let me show you some industry specifics, okay? Now, let's say in this example, you call distressed properties, okay? Real estate, okay? So you're an investor, you got a team of salespeople, we train thousands in this industry as well, and you call distressed properties, all right? People that might be going through a divorce and maybe they can't afford the payment because the other person's left, their income's gone, they're not paying for it, could go into foreclosure, it's gonna ruin this person's credit. It could be a landlord that they're calling that, you know, this, this, uh, this uh, property is just a money pit, putting money into it all the year, people aren't paying, they want to retire, move their kids to Florida and they want to get rid of it, you know, that could be that type of prospect, right? Or it could be a prospect that lost his job, her job, and they can't afford it and so it's going to go into short sales, their credit's going to get run, right? So you're going to come in with a lower offer to buy in cash, maybe in 30 days, to get them out of that, solve their problems. So this is in that first discovery call after you've asked a few connective questions before. Now, and how, here's how I'm tying this in. Let's say they had talked to your, like, uh, let's say not an acquisitions agent, but like some type of sales specialist before that kind of qualifies them. Then they moved you to the discovery call with somebody else called an acquisition agent, kind of different terms of that industry. Now, Nicole had mentioned that you were possibly interested in receiving an offer on your property. That's how you would start that frame there, okay? Nicole would be the person they originally talked to right before you. Notice I, what did I do? Possibly, see that neutral term? So they'd mentioned that you were possibly interested in receiving an offer on your property. I would say the first part of this call, see how we're right back into it, is more to find out about, you know, the property that you have now, you know, the condition, kind of really when and, and why you're looking to sell, um, just to see if, if we could actually do something good for you. And then towards the end of the call, if you feel that it, you know, that it might be what you're looking for, uh, we can talk about possible next steps. Would that help you? Notice how that's all the same. Might be what you're looking for, possible next steps. Now, did you see the tweaks here? It's a little, it's tweaked a little bit different depending on the industry compared to the generic version. First part of this call, okay, is really more for us to find out more about the property you have now, the condition, when and really why you're looking to sell just to see if we could actually do something good for you. So we tweak that a little bit. See how that worked. That's for distressed properties. Let me show you a couple more. I can just close it all down if you don't want me to. Okay, so in this example, let's say if you sell mortgage protection insurance or just general life insurance, okay? Couple connective questions before that. Now, the first part of this call, Jane, it's, it's pretty basic. See, I'm doing the same thing right here. Same frame. It's really more for us to find out, you know, kind of what you might be eligible for. See the tweak? What you might be eligible for and, and really what you have in place now, like when something does happen to you, compared to what you might be looking for as far as financial protection, just to see if, if just to see what that gap looks like to see if we can help. And then towards the end of the call, if you feel that it, you know, that it might be what you're looking for, we can talk about possible next steps. Would that help you? Same thing at the end there. See, that's not changed much. Now analyze this. First part of this call is pretty basic. It's really more for us to find out what you might be eligible for. So for this industry, we can use that to our advantage. What you might be eligible for, take away, what you have in place, look at the gap, what you have in place now, you're gonna show the small gap, when something does happen to you compared to what you might be looking for as far as financial protection, look how I raise that gap, okay? Uh, just to see what that gap looks like to see if we can help. And then towards same frame, okay? Let's go to a different answer, I'll give you one more. Let's say if you sold solar, 
All those industries I just showed, we train tens of thousands in those industries. Train your industry as well. That's why you're watching us here, okay? So the first part of this call, it's pretty basic. It's really more for us to find out kind of who you're using now, you know, your usage, like what type of rate hikes they've been making you pay. Look at my hands. What type of rate hikes they've been making you pay. Now for that industry, we can use that to our advantage. What type of rate hikes they've been making you pay compared to what you're trying to get your bill down to? Look what I just did there. What type of rate hikes they've been making you pay compared to what you're trying to get your bill down to? What did I just do? Built a gap there. What type of rate hikes they've been making you pay compared to what you're trying to get your bill down to? To see what that gap looks like, to see if we can help. And then towards the end of the call, if you feel that it, you know, that it might be what you're looking for, we can talk about possible next steps. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, okay? That's how you set a frame and you neutralize that frame, but yet you build a gap throughout that conversation after this where they start to feel and understand where they are, what their current situation really is compared to where they want to be. And that gap becomes so big because of your questioning ability and your tonality ability that they feel the only thing for them to do is to solve this problem and get what they want, okay? And they look at you as getting them there because no one has ever made them feel, I don't wanna say made them, but gotten them to feel that way because you built such a big gap from your questioning skills and your tonality. You learned how to disarm them where they let their guard down the whole time and you build the gap from where they are, current situation compared to where they want to be. We call that their objective state. What's the gap in between? All these newfound problems that your advanced questioning techniques have allowed them to see they had that they didn't even know they had before they got in that sales process, that conversation with you. So going back, make sure you start using those status frames, NEPQ status frames, on your, especially your inbound leads, they work really well for that, and your outbound leads if they responded to some type of ad on social media or request information, those work really good. You won't use a status frame on an initial first cold call if you prospect that way, but you can use it on that second discovery call when you have more time with them. All right, you're welcome. And if you want more training tips like this, make sure you go to our Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro. We go live in there several times a week. And then if you want more advanced training uh, that we do when I just give away some of these free little nibbles here on YouTube and other platforms that we're on, uh, then make sure you message us in our Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro. You can book with a team member and they can go over all the different training options that we have for your industry if you wanna sell a lot more than you are now. Enjoy it. Join our free Facebook group. Go to www.salesrevolution.pro. We should have a link on here somewhere, salesrevolution.pro. Right when you join the salesrevolution.pro Facebook group, because we've got thousands of entrepreneurs in there, thousands of salespeople like you, thousands of coaches, consultants, executives in there that want to sell more. Right when you join, check your DMs because we're going to message you. Some of my team is going to message you a free training called the NEPQ 101 mini course. It's going to give you a list of different questions and phrases you can use in any sales situation. That alone is going to help you sell more than what you're doing now. And we go live in the Facebook group about three to four times a week with different subject matter trainings, different Q&As, different client interviews that will also help you sell more. Join the Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro. See you there.